what are your thoughts on um, fasting, intermittent fasting for strength and muscle building? You know, are, are, is, are there benefits of, of or, or time restricted eating? Are, are, do are any of those have benefits or based on what you said before, um, you know, if really, if you're working out, you want to be refueling with protein and and so any kind of fasting or starvation for a period of time may actually sort of go against those strength and muscle gains so i love intermittent fasting in fact i i do a bit of intermittent fasting and modified how do you how do you do it so i typically do 12 hours of fasting as right. my minimum right i just want to get in 12 and that's what i recommend anybody who's interested to try intermittent fasting just start with 12 you're probably close there already you know if you went if you stop eating at eight p.m. at night and you don't eat till 8 a.m. the next day that's 12 hours right and so i like fasting for health and for fat loss now there's some research that shows it may not be any more effective for fat loss than carb cycling or keto right whatever the diet is right both can be equally effective for fat loss what i like about intermittent fasting for fat loss is this is something I studied at Yale. We looked at fasting. Um, it increases what's called uncoupling proteins. And these are proteins that poke holes in mitochondria so that you burn more fat and carbs to get the same amount of energy. You're less efficient. You have to burn, burn more. It's like, you know, an engine it produces so much heat and produces so much work, right? These uncoupling proteins make the mitochondria, which is part of our cells that make the real energy for us, ATP, right? So it just makes them less efficient. They produce more heat, mm. less energy. So you have to burn more carbs and fat to get the same amount of energy. That's the one, one thing I like about them. The other thing I like about intermittent fasting is the, the mindset for somebody, right? So it depends, you know, on the type of person you are. Like, let's say you're, you're trying to watch what you eat, right? And you want to drop whatever, 15, 20 pounds. So you're tr trying to change your diet and you want to lower your carb intake as your way. You're going to do some carb cycling. And today's your super low carb day. You can only have 50 grams of carbs. Every morning you go to Starbucks and get a black coffee. But today you're standing there, the line's really long, and you're standing there and that pumpkin bread is staring you in the face and you're just like, oh my God, I love that pumpkin bread, right? If you're on a regular diet, you're going to be like, okay, you know, if I get the pumpkin bread now, <laughs> I won't eat pasta for dinner, okay? And so you're making like these constant like, Negotiations. You know, yeah, yeah, negotiations all day long about, whereas if you're not eating until 2 p.m., because you're intermittent fasting and you walk in the Starbucks at 8 a.m. to get your black coffee and you see that pumpkin bread, you're going to be like, wow, that looks really good. No, I, it's not my time it's to eat It's not an option, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it makes it easier for a lot of people, mm -hmm. they find. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like a mindset. It's like, yeah, you I would know, agree it, with that. Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons why I like it. Now, for building muscle, it sucks. Really? There's not a Mr. Olympia competitor, not, I'm not even talking about winners, competitors. They're probably not even a pro bodybuilder that it does intermittent fasting. Because those periods of not eating, what's happening to the muscle? You're breaking down your muscle. Now, a normal person, when they eat again, will rebuild those amino acids that were lost. No, and they're, but if you're someone who's trying to build muscle, you don't want to lose it to then just try to build it back mm. and try to now build more. So what are you doing? Because you, you, if you said you do 12 hours, like clearly you've got, at your age, you've got, you know, you, you're holding a lot of muscle. Like do you, on that first meal, get quite a lot of protein to sort of kick that back off again? Or how, how? Yeah, so one of, the, one of the, the things that we studied, and this is back in my, the lab I was in at, at Yale School of Medicine is we looked at what happens, and this is, and we did some human stuff, but in rats as well, what happens when you fast and then have a high-carb meal or a high-protein meal? Is there a difference, mm. right? And so what we found was when you had the high-protein meal, it boosted the calorie burn even further that you got from the fasting. 
Oh. When you had the high carb meal, it basically stopped it. So I typically recommend, and and again, like you've done the fasting, doesn't really matter which meal you have after the fast, right? You've gotten to the fast, just eat, right? But for somebody who really is wants to maximize fat loss, right? I would recommend having a high protein, low carb meal as your first meal after the fast. Mm. And again, we're getting into the nitty gritty here, right? But it may help extend the amount of calories you're burning from the fasting. Mm. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Like I, I do sixteen eight, and I've, I, I yeah, that's the typical right. And I interviewed someone, and and then I've just like I'm for me, it's habitual. I just like you said, it's like look, even though I want to eat maybe later in the evening or early in the morning. I'm like look, that's when I eat, and then. When you do eat, you're like, okay, well, I need my first meal, which I want to have, like you said, the protein. So you're kind of focused on that. And then you fall for a while. Yeah. And yeah. then you have another meal, and then you're starting to come to the end of your window. And then so it, it, it seems to kind of direct you into sort of like more positive behavior um, because you're Agreed. kind of pretty much yes. full most of the time. Yeah. You know, in some yes. in some cases, I'm, I'm like, you know, I have my, my wife does me like a sort of a bunch of meat or a steak thing, and I'm like, I can't eat anything, you know. <laughs> it's like finishing it a little bit earlier. Right, yeah. Yeah, so that's interesting. I, I want to go on to recovery as we sort of wrap up, and and um, clearly, you know, recovering from workouts is is important, and, and it's a bit of an industry buzzword now where everybody's talking about different types of recovery. One of the things, one of the bits of research I saw, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but it says, New research suggests low intensity cardio after resistance training can enhance recovery. Do you know anything about that? And if so, how effective is that approach compared to other forms of of recovery? Yeah, so there's also a study that found that people who are too sedentary, these are people who exercise, right? But the rest of the day, they're very sedentary, don't recover as well as people who are more active. Hmm. And you know, this made me think of myself as a teenager when I was a bodybuilder, particularly on leg days, which were usually on Sunday. I would go train legs at the gym, like kill ourselves. <laughs> and my training partner and I, we, I mean, this is back before we knew much about nutrition, but we would, you know, load up on, you know, like burgers and, you know, and just sit and watch football <laughs> all day. And the concept was, I don't, I'm not going to move because I just did this crazy workout. Now I'm just going to sit here and recover without, I'm, I don't want to move. I want to expend as few calories as possible. And that may be the wrong way to recover. Hmm. And uh, I just did a video on this study, as a matter of fact. And my theory is that the greater activity increases blood flow. Hmm. So when you're increasing blood flow to the recovering muscles, you're now delivering more oxygen, more nutrients, right? More hormones, and you have more blood flow going away from the muscle, which is carrying away waste products, Interesting. which helps it recover by getting those waste products out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so yes. You're moving fluids. Yes, Um, so doing some light cardio after you work out I believe could help with recovery on that sort of, con- again, this isn't the, uh, this isn't definitive answer. This is definitely why it, it's working, but this, that's my theory on why doing something like that, a little light cardio or just staying active instead of I've worked out hard now I'm going to sit. I mean, that was literally when I was trying to, you <laughs> yeah, know, I when I was trying that. to get to 300 pounds, that was my whole goal in life was to move as little as possible. Because I didn't want, you know, it was, I was a, you know, I was a skinny kid. So trying to gain weight was not easy for me. So I would do as little activity as possible, thinking I'm going to build more muscle because I'm burning fewer calories. And now those calories that I would have burned walking and are now going to go to refuel my muscle. And I probably needed more blood flow. Mm, that's <laughs> that's sort of bro, bro, that bro science type of. <laughs> 